everyone. Thank you so much for joining. It's time to get started. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today. I have everyone muted at the moment, um, but feel free to post any questions throughout this webinar in the control panel. We're also going to be recording this webinar for your review later. For those of you who don't know me, I am Brie Fernie. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Team Clearly IP. I will be your presenter today. And then joining me a little later on is Tony Lewis, our CEO. Tony's gonna team up with me and do a live demo and demonstrate how to fire up SIP trunks and manage them and any, answer any technical questions you might have. I anticipate today's webinar will be probably around 45 minutes to an hour with some Q&A at the end. We have lots to go through, so please bear with me as today is truly a 201 on all things SIP trunking, which is actually an extension from our SIP trunking 101 webinar, which is actually our most popular subject matter that we try to cycle through on a regular basis. So actually our webinar recording from earlier this year, I believe it was in March, our SIP trunking 101 is our most popular watch video on our social channels. And there's been lots of new requirements and technological advancements made in connection with SIP trunking. And so we really wanted to review that with you today, go over some of the new requirements, and certainly some new considerations when you're transitioning a business to SIP trunking. So we have a lot to cover today. We're going to discuss what SIP trunking is, um, what the effect of SIP trunking has on existing telephone systems and the end of POTS lines, cost of SIP trunking with an example of return on investment, how easy it is to set up SIP trunking for your business. We're going to talk a little bit about enhanced 911 services and telecom laws. I'm going to discuss Stir Shaken and our free attestation call and check service. And then we're going to go into 10 DLC. This is business application of person messaging. So lots to go through today in extension of our SIP trunking 101. Um, I'll begin with a quick introduction to our company. For those of you who are not familiar with Clearly IP, we specialize in business, telecommunications, unified communications as a service, cloud telephony. We are a team of experts in business telecom. We've got a combined 300 plus years of experience building some of the largest largest telecom applications in the world. Our team has been closely associated with the free PBX open source community as members of our founding partners were part of this original collaboration of free PBX. We have offices located in Canada and the US and staff located around the globe. And we really are telecom experts that are known as leaders, um, selling, developing, and pioneering new technologies to the business telecom marketplace. We support a partner channel for solutions for end users, for small, medium, and enterprise global companies worldwide that are really looking forward to taking advantage of unified communications. So I'm gonna start with a brief explanation on what SIP trunking is for anyone with us today that's looking for a better understanding. So SIP, S-I-P stands for Session Initiation Protocol. SIP trunking is a method of sending voice and other unified communication services over the internet. It works with an IP enabled PBX. SIP trunking replaces traditional phone lines like analog lines or PRIs, T1 lines. And before SIP became a popular and reliable method of trans transmitting voice signals, all our telephone calls were primarily carried over the PSTN, the public switched telephone network. So the PSTN is the network of the copper phone lines we traditionally associate with the telephone. So the PSTN is a circuit switch network which requires a physical connection between two points to complete a call, whereas SIP trunks are virtual phone lines that enable users to make and receive phone calls over the internet versus over those copper lines. So to anyone in the world who has a phone number. So SIP trunks utilize a packet switch network in which voice calls are broken down into digital packets and sent across a network to the final destination. So we get asked, what are SIP trunks? What are SIP channels? So let's talk about SIP channels. Each SIP trunk supports SIP channels. A SIP channel is equivalent to one 
incoming or outgoing call. And a SIP trunk can hold an unlimited number of SIP channels. So users only need one SIP trunk, no matter how many concurrent calls they expect. And the number of channels required really is going to depend on how many calls the business will make at any one time. I get asked, what is the difference between SIP and VoIP? Well, VoIP is the protocol that allows voice signals to travel over data lines. So while all SIP is VoIP, not all VoIP is SIP. <laughs> so why SIP, you may ask? Well, the old fashioned PSTN network with copper lines is becoming a thing of the past very quickly. Today's telephony is moving away from these traditional PSTN connections and into the world of flexible and modern SIP trunking. We actually published a blog in March titled um, An End of an Era, the End of POTS Services, to really help you understand what this is going to look like and what you need to do to prepare if you're a business still using analog or PRIT1 services. The FCC in the United States reports that the number of POTS lines in the US declined from 122 million in 2010 to 41 million in 2019. So that is a dramatic drop. So several telcos are already on the path to drop POTS lines within the next few years and rates for remaining POTS services like your analog lines for fax or alarm or security. These costs are starting to rise as providers are forced to support their remaining POTS infrastructure for a drastically smaller pool of customers. According to the Bureau of Labor, POTS charge rates increased 36% from 2010 to 2021, even as mobile phone rates have declined. So major telephone providers have already started phasing out POTS lines, while the USA FCC has issued an order that mandates that all POTS lines in the US be replaced with an alternative service, such as fiber or wireless connections by August 2nd of this year. So the FCC will allow carriers to stop selling copper telephone lines, which means fire, alarm, security systems are going to need to migrate. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when you will move to SIP trunks. As someone that was pretty much born into the telecommunications industry, I was utterly flabbergasted when I heard of the final D-Day for plain old telephony service, AKA POTS. Um, I mean, I've been selling POTS services for 20 plus years for various devices. So I am keenly aware of all the businesses still using POTS lines to support their fax services, their alarms, oh, point of sale and other vital services that stay connected and stay maintained on a POTS line. So that's why we wanted to continue educating everyone on SIP trunking and the benefits so that you know what your plan should be if you still need to make that transition to SIP trunking. So definitely check out that blog I authored on the subject back in March under our blogs page. Okay, next up, I'm gonna give you an example of return on investment. Everyone is always motivated by cost savings, of course, and improved technology, that's always a top priority. So I'm gonna use an example of 50 people, let's say 50 extensions in a business, so they've got 50 phones. We know traditionally that the, this customer would typically need a 10 to 15 channel pure IT1 service. I'm gonna use 10 for now for example purposes, so let's say 10 simultaneous calls in and out. So, and that most of the time the business will peak at 10 simultaneous calls. But there might be some times where they need to get more than 10 calls. They might need to get an 11th call. So a 10 channel PRI can range from, let's say $500 to $1,000 per month, depending on the term. I know in Vancouver, Canada, a 10 channel PRI was usually around 650 a month for a three year contract. So let's use that figure. That would equate to $7,800 a year, and that would be $23,400 over that three year term. So let's look at SIP trunking versus that PRI T1 cost. A three year SIP trunk contract with Clear the AP for the same 10 channels would be $17 and 99 cents a channel. So times 10, that'll be $179 and 99 cents a month versus that 650 per month for the pure IT one. And the beauty with SIP trunking and our platform is you can buy the 10 channels you need 
at that $179 per month. And then you can also pay per minute when you need to burst up for those peak times where you're getting more calls. So if an 11th call comes in, your system will automatically burst up so you can receive that call. So 10 channels is $179.99 per month. Let's add in 5,000 minutes of bursting. So that would be 5,000 minutes times 0 0.09 cents per minute. That's going to be another $45 a month. So for a total of $225 a month, you're getting 10 SIP trunks with the bursting capability versus that fixed $650 price per month for a PRIT1 with no bursting capability. So that's a potential savings of $425 per month. Um, that equates to $5,100 per year and nearly $15,000 in savings over a three-year term. So that is a great motivation um, using that 10-channel PRIT1 as a scenario of cost savings when you transition to SIP trunks. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about the bursting feature we just discussed. So with SIP trunks, you can burst up if at certain times you get more calls than normal. A lot of times people need to have more analog lines or more PRIT1 lines because it isn't as flexible. So you have to go with a fixed service. Um, so the beautiful thing here about SIP trunking is if you notice your call volume is going up, then you can burst or add another channel within minutes versus having to add a second PRI trunk with more channels, which would be at a substantial increase fixed cost every month. And don't forget, you'd likely also need new hardware to accommodate. So uh, the other thing I want to mention too is SIP trunking will, you know, often include most of your long distance within a large footprint in North America and offer super low rates for international calling. So for those of us that grew up only having access to copper lines, that can really feel like magic. And we've got a great formula here at Clearly IP where we can help your business determine how many channels, AKA lines you're going to need. So we're always here to help you figure that out. You can give us a copy of your phone bill, outlining all your lines and phone numbers, and then we can analyze that and give you a recommendation on trunks and channels, et cetera. Okay, so back to what's the difference between SIP and VoIP. So although SIP and VoIP are often used interchangeably, they, again, are not the same thing. VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It is a very broad term that covers any phone calls made over the internet and includes a group of protocol technologies of which SIP is an example. SIP is one of those specific protocols that enable VoIP. So all SIP is voice but not all voice is SIP. So SIP trunking, I'm sure you can see, is pretty amazing. Not all SIP trunking is created equal. You're going to want to be very um, clear with your questions whenever you're looking at a potential SIP trunking provider. You're going to want to ask them how many servers does that provider have? What is their infrastructure? Do they have service globally? Do they have access to global phone numbers. Um, you should ask about the porting process. Uh, how, how long does that process take? What are the costs associated with porting? And make sure that you can keep your existing numbers. You want to check if they're fully compliant with enhanced 911 integration. I'm going to talk about that shortly. What does their service and support include? Can you call them and reach a live breathing person? Or is it online chat only? Do they have a dedicated administrative portal? So you can make your own demand changes. You can manage your platform yourself. And can you do a trial of the service so that you can verify support and call quality and truly the ease of firing up a SIP trunk and ongoing maintenance? So these are all really important considerations and should be clarified before you sign up and start making the change to SIP trunking. So above and beyond the benefits we've already discussed, let's continue on the why you should be utilizing SIP trunking for business. So we now all understand that SIP trunks are telephone line trunks that are delivered over an IP network using the SIP protocol and that using this method, telecom providers can connect multiple channels to a customer's platform. So DIDs and phone numbers can be linked to the same SIP trunk and numbers can be ported into that SIP trunk too.
And, you know, there's several other benefits over PSTN solutions, lower costs for monthly line rentals, thanks to fewer fixed lines installed at your office, lower call charges, thanks to the competition among SIP trunk providers. Some SIP trunk providers even offer unlimited call volume, if that's something you're looking for. Improved customer service offered through a more geographical and flexible solution with access to easier access really to international numbers so businesses can easily and efficiently add numbers to their SIP solutions and terminate them just as quickly too. So since customers can connect or contact companies with greater ease, this can mean that your sales can increase as well. And SIP trunks aren't bound to a location, which means that they can move offices without having to change your business phone numbers. You can eliminate VoIP gateways as well as all phone calls because they arrive via IP. This means no extra conversion and can maximize quality too. Modern IP PBXs and unified communication solutions offer customers enhanced productivity, better sales, improved mobility. You can connect your IP PBX to a SIP trunking solution, which is far easier and faster than traditional PSTN lines. And it's easier to include additional channels on your SIP trunk to handle increased calls compared to increasing hard lines. And with SIP trunks, you can select the perfect number of channels for your unique re requirements. On the other hand with ISDN and traditional phone lines, you have to choose a specific number of lines and those were fixed at a fixed monthly cost. So I could go on and on. There are so many benefits, but um, we're going to move on now to E911 services as this is a really important component and consideration of SIP trunking. So enhanced 911 or E911 is a system used in North America to automatically provide the caller's location to 911 dispatchers. We all know that 911 is the universal emergency telephone number in which callers dial in the event of emergency and where locations need to be communicated. So there are currently three laws in effect in the United States in connection with 911 that every partner and customer should know about. Uh, we do hold several events around these telecom laws. Um, so anyone returning here today should be quite familiar with Carrie's Law and the Raybomb Act. However, some of you might not be as familiar with the newer Alyssa's Law. So I'm going to briefly cover all three. But bottom line here is if you are a business telecom provider or you're a customer with me today, you need to be compliant with these laws. Although the laws are currently for new system installations, it really should and could be addressed for your existing phone system installations to ensure that you can properly protect your people. So let's touch on all three, starting with Carrie's Law. It's named after a Carrie Hunt, whose estranged husband assaulted her at a hotel in Texas. Uh, her nine-year-old daughter was there. She attempted to call 911 four separate times from the hotel room phone but unfortunately because the phone system was set up that they had to dial nine to reach an outside line to make a call all four of those 911 calls failed and doctors did testify that carrie lived for some time after the assault and had those 911 calls been reached she would likely be alive today so carrie's law is all around not requiring you to dial nine or another digit to access an outside line. Uh, the Raid Bomb Act was named after a lawyer and congressman who championed this telecommunications policy through much of his career. It ensures that first responders have a correct location assigned with the 911 call received. And then the newer Alyssa's Law, named after Alyssa, a 14-year-old student in Parkland, Florida. At a high school, she was a victim of a shooting that killed 17 people. Alyssa's Law is legislation to improve the response time of law enforcement during emergencies in public schools. So it mandates that all public and elementary secondary school buildings be equipped with silent panic alarms that directly notify law enforcement. So as you can see, Alyssa's law is the newest and quickly gaining momentum. It's currently passed in three states, 
Florida, New York, and New Jersey, and is pending in four other states at this time. So whether you're a service provider with us today or an end customer, we want you to know how to be compliant with these telecom laws. For our service providers, your salespeople, or your onboarding specialists need to understand and be explaining the laws and requesting the information from your customers to implement these solutions. And if you're a customer, you should be implementing these requirements proactively and working with your service provider to implement and test. So to simplify this, um, I'm just going to go all three real quick again. For Carrie's law, it's simple. The phone system will not be set up with the requirement to dial nine or another digit as a prefix to make an outbound 911 call. With Raybomb Act, you need to give more exact location instructions. So setting up your main address uh, in is not well, I guess technically it is compliant, but it's not enough information. Here's an example of an office floor plan and how you can program your dispatchable locations. You can actually program them to say second floor or northwest corner office or southwest sales office on the ground floor. So get your floor plans out, get your extension lists out, and update these dispatchable locations with more details. And then lastly, Alyssa's law is where schools are required to have silent panic alarms in every classroom that directly notify law enforcement. So the teacher, whoever can quickly hit that silent alarm and it'll notify law enforcement. We do have a solution called a panic button for this. It's a simple, affordable, easy add-on to a phone system. So definitely check that out as one of our solutions to be compliant with Alyssa's law. Okay, next is, let's talk about Stir Shaken. It has been a super trending hot topic recently. There's been a ton of buzz in the United States telecom industry around the smackdown of robocalls. Uh, we've been receiving just a ton of, of questions from partners, service providers, resellers, and even customers feeling really confused and looking for advice and guidance. So Stir Shaken is a suite of protocols and procedures intended to combat caller ID spoofing on public telephone networks. So it's a framework of interconnected standards. Uh, STIR Shaken are acronyms. STIR stands for Secure Telephone Identity Revisited. And Shaken stands for Signature-Based Handling of insert Asserted Information Using Token Standards. It's a mouthful. So what does this really mean? It means that originating service providers managing customer calls are required to ensure that calls are assigned to prevent and reduce robocalls and caller ID spoofing. So this is very important. If you do uh, determine that you are an originating service provider, let's say you're reselling clearly IP SIP trunking to customers and you're car charging the end customer, technically you will be required to assign those calls and you'll need to go through the process of getting your own stir shaken certificate and start assigning those customer calls if you are an end customer with me today concerned that your current provider isn't assigning your calls you should definitely check with your provider and test your main business phone numbers. We actually have a free call and test service to check your numbers. It's called our attestation service. It's simple and free. The only information collected is the phone number you're calling from, and then it's gonna update you and tell you if your call has been certified, and what the attestation level is and who is your originating service provider, et cetera. So for example, I called this morning from my personal cell and it confirmed the caller ID and read my phone number back to me. It told me that I passed verification. It told me that I had a level A for the attestation level and that my call was certified by Google Fi and they even gave me the service provider code. So definitely check that out. If you're unsure, you can call that number and test and it'll give you those details. Um, I want to talk about virtual faxing. It's another really important component of SIP trunking. Customers often don't realize to ask about fax offerings when they're looking at moving to SIP trunking. For example, our Clearly IP trunking platform offers a total virtual fax solution called SendFax.2. So virtual faxing is a really great piece of SIP trunking. You can send faxes and receive faxes via email. You can enable and manage specific email addresses or domains to send faxes using our services. Each fax-capable DID on your account can be associated with up to 
100 authorized email addresses for email domains and email addresses can be authorized to send from multiple fax DIDs. So you should be asking any new SIP trunking provider you're considering if they do offer fax as a part of their SIP trunking platform. Okay, so we've addressed how SIP trunking can give you the power to enhance your business experience and that once you've chosen a provider, hopefully Clearly IP, you can choose a dedicated internet line to support your SIP trunk. So SIP trunks simply go on your in-place high speed since many firewalls can handle several WAN connections and internet lines are often low cost. You can even go with a separate internet um, line or VoIP connection as a great way to enhance the quality of your VoIP calls. This process can keep your voice traffic separated from your data traffic. However, the outcome of your choices will depend largely on the cost of your upgrades and your network structure. We can also help you look at that and determine the best route and give you some advice and guidance. So remember, you can also upgrade your on-premise PBX to an on-premise IP PBX. So unlike with PSTN lines, which are often connected to a hardware-based PBX solution, an IP PBX can offer you an easy to manage and flexible solution. So if you're not quite ready to move to the cloud or to a hosted platform, which includes your SIP trunks for connectivity, then not, why not consider upgrading your service to an on-premise IP PBX and still be able to leverage the benefits of flexibility and modern refinements that really only IP telephony can bring. Okay, last thing I want to talk about is 10 DLC messaging. So 10 DLC applies to businesses using A2P application of person business messaging. For example, let's say a dentist office texting patients appointment reminders. This is considered business messaging application to person. So 10 DLC stands for 10 digit long code. It is a new standard for application to person business messaging in the United States, which applies to all messaging over 10 digit geographic phone numbers. So your business may already be familiar with using long codes to send text messages to customers and the benefits they provide, such as text enabling a customer service number. However, 10 DLC is introducing a new component to any business who would like to send text messages to a customer in North America. So carriers are stepping in to regulate these messaging programs to better protect their subscribers, your customers, and eliminate the spam going to them. So while the experience receiving from mobile users will still feel very much the same, the process for businesses to implement these programs will look quite a bit different and there are several things you should know. So in a nutshell, 10 DLC is intended to protect consumers from spam while ensuring that good actors have access to the resources they need to engage with their customers. As of May 2021, all major US wireless, wireless carriers had announced support for this new ecosystem. The new requirements come in two categories, your company brand registration and campaign registration. There are carrier surcharges. Brand and campaign re registration means that customers generating long code A2P messages are now required to register both their business brand and messaging use case campaigns in a central repository. There are carrier surcharges. These are wireless carrier imposed surcharges, sometimes referred to as pass-through fees. They vary by carrier message type, SMS or MMS, and in some cases also by type also by type of campaign. So I'm not gonna go any further on the subject matter, just the importance that when considering SIP trunking, a partner in SIP for your business, be sure to confirm that they can offer support of 10 DLC and campaign registration, et cetera, if the business is doing application to person messaging. Okay, that's about enough of me talking. I'm gonna to invite Tony now to step in and demonstrate how easy it is to um, set up some SIP trunks using our SIP trunking platform. Hi, Tony, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing pretty good, Bree. Great. Okay, let me get my screen share up. Okay, so we're just going to spend a little bit here just walking through how fast you can get up a, a SIP trunking with us that you can connect to your PBX. I want to be using a free PBX-based system to actually connect the trunks to as an example. The first thing you do is you go to our trunking portal, uh, trunking.clearlyp.com. If you don't have an account, there's a sign-up link to create an account. It does require calling us after you create the account to verify your business information because of all the new laws for 
stir shaken and the know your customer, we have to verify you're uh, an actual person and you know get some information. It all happens instant. You call, you spend a couple minutes on the phone with us and we'll get your account verified. Once you have an account with us, you can log in and start creating what we call trunking locations. So under products and services, locations, you'll see I have a whole bunch of different locations here already. But if I wanna add a new location, it's pretty quick. I just hit the button, add a new location. And we tend to think of a location as a unique phone system or PBX that you're gonna to connect to us. So we're gonna pick a SIP trunking location that we want. And we sell this on two different call path types I think Bree talked about. One is our subscription call path where you don't pay by the minute, you just pay by the call path and uh, you don't pay by the minute for domestic calling in the US and Canada. And the other is metered where you pay by the minute, you don't pay by the call path. So we'll go ahead here and buy a subscription call path and we're gonna buy two of them so we can make and receive two calls at a time, not pay by the minute. And then we have to pick what type of contract period, what we call a subscription that you want. Uh, you can pick from a month to month, a 12 or 36 month. So month to month, you can cancel any time. 12 months, you can cancel any time after 12 months. 36 months, you can cancel any time after 36 months. And of course, your pricing goes down based on your contract term with us. So we'll pick month to month and we'll go into um, next. And we're gonna give this location a name. So webinar. 201. We're not going to enable an international concurrency. We'll talk about those in a minute. And then we're going to set a default call ID. So by default, we will send the call ID that you're sending us from your phone system. But in the event, what you send us is invalid, and we define invalid as not a valid phone number. It doesn't mean you have to own it. It just means that it has to be a valid phone number. Uh, so the default behavior is if what you send us is not a valid phone number, we'll replace it with whatever you put here. Now, under stir shaken, we cannot, if, if you're sending a call ID from a, as a phone number that you don't own with us, we cannot sign that with an A. So you, we can only sign that with a B saying, we know who the customer is, but we can't attest to the level of the call ID you're using, which is gonna cause your calls to get potentially picked up as spam by the different carriers. So the other option we have is update a known call ID. So it says, if the call ID you send us is not a number that you have bought with us, then replace it with what we have here. So instead of update invalid, we can say update unknown call ID. And this will basically guarantee every call that goes out is signed with an A by us. Because if the call ID you send us isn't a number you own with us, we will replace it with the default one you define here. We'll hit next. Uh, we can start buying phone numbers from here. They're not mandatory. So if you need numbers from us, you can buy them from here. Uh, if you need to port in numbers after we create the location, you can submit port requests to us. So we'll go ahead and pick a number, a couple numbers here. So I'm gonna pick Appleton, Wisconsin, since that's where I am. And it'll come back with a list of numbers and in inventory and you just pick which numbers you want. So we grab these two, we'll hit next. Actually, before I do that, if you wanna get numbers for other areas, so let's say I wanted numbers in California. And let's just pick, sure, we'll just do this. And then it'll show numbers, you just add them to your store. And you'll see in the checkout cart all the numbers you're adding. If you want toll free, same thing, click on toll free, pick what type you want. So let's say an 855, and it'll show you all the 855s available. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this California one. So you can add toll freeze if you want. We'll hit next, uh, 911. So by default, you get a 911 location for free with us. You don't pay for the first one. And then if you have additional 911 locations you need, you pay for those. So we'll go ahead and say, we want to add emergency services. We'll give this a name of clearly IP. The caller name is gonna be clearly. And then it's gonna set a phone number. Uh, an address, and then we can hit verify. That's gonna verify the address is good. I can click it. <laughs> and it verified the address is good for 911. We hit next. Then you would normally pick your payment source here. So I this account is a test account is under terms. Normally this would be your credit card. There's a button to add your credit card. Uh, agree to the terms of service and you're done. 
So we bought in two call pass, two dids, and all the 911. And it's going to go set all this up. And it takes about 10, 15 seconds. And then it's done. And you are now ready to connect to your phone system and start making and receiving phone calls. There we go. Finished. We'll close that. And we will go find that new one we just created. I called it demo, I think, or webinar. There it is. So if we go view this location, we'll see all the information about it. So we'll see who our primary contact is. That's the logged in user. Um, we're not going to run through all this because this webinar is more of a just a quick glance of how to get a trunk up. Um, we'll see we have two call paths. And we do have concurrency enabled with five calls. So what this allows us to do is we can make and receive uh, two normal calls that we don't pay by the minute. And then we can make and receive up to five more calls that we pay by the minute up to $100 a month limit. And you can edit this or turn it off. So if you don't want bursting on where you pay by the minute, you turn it off and now it's off. So you can only make and receive two calls where you're not paying by the minute. Uh, if you want to turn international on, you can flip it on. And you'll see by default, it's a three call pass. And then I happen to have this set as $20 a week limit. So I can only make three international calls at a time. And I have a $20 week limit. If I exceed that, it's going to stop all international calls. We can edit that information if we click the little pencil icon, adjust metered services. We can say I only want two, and I want my limit to be $5 a week. And we're done. So how do we set this up in free PBX? Uh, there's a lot of other information here on all your phone numbers and routing of numbers. Again, we're not going to run through all of this, but everything is self-managed. Now, to actually go set up your phone system is really quick. Uh, if you're using a free PBX system, if you're using something else, you'd go set up your trunks based on whatever that PBX requires to set up SIP trunks. We have documentation on our knowledge base on a lot of common PBXs, how to set up our SIP trunks. And of course, our support team can assist you if you need some help. So I've got a test location here. There it is. So in free PBX world, it's really simple. We go into the location. And we have this little token. This is an API token. We're going to copy that token. And we're going to log into our free PBX system. And you're going to install a module we have called Clearly Trunking. And it's a free module. You can download it from our wiki. And our wiki is at kb.clearlyap.com. And you can get to our documentation from the portal here under Support Documentation. If you click on that, it'll open up the documentation. So in that documentation, we'll walk through how to install that module in free PBX. But once you have the module installed, you just go to the clearly trunking module, paste in this API token and hit submit. And it's going to set up a connection back to the PBX or back to our um, trunking platform. And it's going to bring in all the data. So it's going to show you the name of the location, the default 911 name that you have set up. And from here, we're going to say auto configure the outbound routes. And this is going to pick which of the DADs you bought from us that is going to be your primary for uh, call ID. Hit save changes. And this now went and created all the trunks to us. So it's going to create four trunks for redundancy, two trunks to each of our data centers. We have data centers in the US and in Canada. So it determines if you're US or Canada based on where you're buying from your address. So we run two redundant SBCs in each data center, and we run at least two different data centers that you connect to. So your redundancy really is, is a times four redundancy for inbound and outbound calling. So it set up all four trunks automatically for you. We go look at outbound routes. It set up an emergency route, a normal outbound route, and an international route. If we go look at our inbound routing for our DIDs that we bought, our phone numbers, there's nothing there yet. But if we go back to the clearly trunking module and our number listing, we can talk to automatically add these four DADs or five DADs that belong to that location. So if we hit the button, it auto added those. And now if we go look at inbound routes, those four numbers are here. Now you just set whatever routing you want to route them wherever you want them to go on your PBX. By default, we route them to this clearly trunking did verification system on your PBX. So if you call one of these numbers, 
it will play back your car ID and the DID you dialed, letting you, confirming to you that the number's working now, your PBX, because your PBX is what's playing that back. And you're up and running. You can now start making and receiving your phone calls. Uh, managing SMS is really simple. Managing emergency calling profiles are simple. Everything's managed from within your free PBX system. So that is my high level what, overview, Brie. Excellent. I see we have lots of questions. Yes, yeah, so let me run through these here. Is bursting always on? So no, uh, you control that. So back in the location, you control your bursting. You control it two ways. How many concurrent call passive bursting you want, and what do you want as your monthly limit that we reject calls after that? Can we get notified when we're using up our bursting limit? Uh, yes. So again, you set your thresholds here. But up here, these are your current balances. So we can see uh, on our metered, we have a $100 a month limit. We've used zero of it. International, actually, I think I changed that. Refresh. No, I did. I left it as 20. International is $20 a week, and we've used zero of it. Well, how do I know what's monthly and weekly? Right down here. International shows weekly limit. Meet, normal metered shows monthly limit. So how do you get notifications when things are, are getting close to being used up? If you click the little bell icon here, I can say every, I don't know, every two hours, if I've exceeded more than 80%, actually, I don't want it there. I want it for metered. So I can say every hour, if I exceeded more than 80%, send me an email. Or you can say every day only, so just send one email. And then international, you might want to be a little more aggressive. Every hour, if I've used more than 80%, send me an email. And that's how you can be notified your usage if it's getting close. And once we port our numbers to ClearP, does our existing vendor get canceled? What is the process? No, we can never cancel for you. No carrier can cancel service with another carrier. So once you port your numbers to us, you need to contact your losing carrier to actually cancel service. In, it just doesn't work that way in the U.S. and Canada. We can't cancel service for you. You have to do that with them. Most carriers continue charging you, even though they've ported the number, because the number is just one piece of the service you have with them. You might have a PRI or SIP trunks with them, which is where most of the money is actually on your bill. And just moving the numbers over doesn't actually generally, normally won't remove the numbers from your account with your losing carrier. They still have it on the billing profile until you contact them to close out your account or remove those numbers. How does voice quality compare on SIP to analog or T1? So SIP is always going to be much better than analog because SIP is all digital. Analog isn't. SIP is going to be comparable to a T1. T1's, everything in T1's run digital on uh, ULAW is the Kodak in everything in the PST network is still ULAW. So uh, you're going to see basically the same you know, a lot of people say SIP sounds better than a T1. In the end, to the average human, it's going to sound the same. You're going to notice no difference. Analog, for sure, you're going to notice a difference. How long does it take to get your stir shaking grade? I'm not sure what you mean by stir shaking grade. Uh, as an end user, there's no, you don't do anything for stir shaking. It's, it's stir shaking is a carrier level thing. We determine what what grade to put on a call based on the caller ID. So if the call you're sending us is a call ID of a number you own with us, it gets an A. If it's a call ID with a different number, it gets a B. And that's how the grade is determined. Uh, we don't do anything with a C because we're not an international gateway provider. So we don't allow, you know, we're not somebody who sits and sells traffic to someone in India who's then bringing traffic into the U.S. We're not, we're not a gateway provider. What automated fillover and how does it work? We have two different ways of, of failover for inbound. Uh, outbound, your PBX is already doing it. So in those outbound routes, you'll notice in an outbound route, so if we look at the uh, trunking outbound route, it's actually going to try all four of our trunks. It's going to try one U.S. Central, then two U.S. Central, then one U.S. East, then two U.S. East. So your failover for outbound calling is built into your routing logic. Your failover for inbound, so in the event that your PBX is down and we try to send you a call, you can set failover at two levels. The first thing you can do is at a location level, you can set failover. And that failover in this example is I'm going to send the calls to this phone number when the PBX is unreachable. So we get an inbound call, we try to send it to your PBX, and your PBX doesn't reply back. 
The other thing you could do is you could fail over instead of to a phone number to another URI uh, in the SIP world. So I can go SIP and then some IP address or domain name, which is another PBX that you have. And we'll forward over to that on unreachable. You could also set it to be immediate. So every call will immediately fail over to this. So if you're putting your PBX into maintenance mode, you could come in here and set immediate and we'll just automatically start failing over. So that's global level failover for the whole location. And of course you can have more than one location with us, but then at a DID or phone number level, you can set failover. So if I set failover on a phone number, we're gonna use that. And if a phone number doesn't have a failover set, we're gonna come back to the location level failover. So in a phone number, if I view the phone number, there's a failover section. So in that failover section, number failover, and you can set the same types of thing. You can fail over to a phone number or a URI, and you can fail over unreachable or immediate. What happens if I meet my metered balance before the end of my billing cycle? Will the customer be able to make and take calls? No, so I mean, it's a hard cut because it's a, it's a um, risk factor and it's a, you know, to help in case your PBX got compromised, it's gonna stop letting you make and receive calls uh, when that meter balance is met. And again, we talked about how you can set notifications to be notified. And then what will happen on our side is if you try to make an outbound call, we respond back with a SIP response of, I think 404, not, not 404, uh, it's a 50 something not authorized. And then we'll say no call pass available in, in the message, not, not the voice message, but in the SIP response. How long does a port usually take? So, a port has, we have no control over how long a port takes. Uh, we generally say five to seven days. Your losing carrier has complete control over that. Same with what time we want to port at. We can ask the carrier to port after hours, and it's up to the losing carrier if they're going to honor that or not. So in the end, unfortunately, in the U.S., the losing carrier has full control over the rejecting the port and setting the time. So you tell us what time you want, we request it but it's up to the losing carrier if they accept that time or not. I can tell you most losing carriers don't accept things on the weekends. It's one of the questions, what about like a Sunday evening or a Friday evening? Um, most losing carriers won't take ports on a weekend because if something goes wrong, they don't have the staff to go handle why routing isn't working right. Again, we can always ask, but it's up to the losing carrier. Um, I can tell you something, you know, you know, we port hundreds of numbers a day. I can tell you it's really rare we see problems when during business hours, I'm um, doing a port, as long as everything's done ahead of time and planned ahead of time and you have all your, your routing and trunk set up on your PVX, it's transparent to you. Um, you're not dropping calls or losing calls during the port process. It's all under the covers and just happens. It's really, really rare that there's a, a hiccup anymore in the porting process. Can I do messaging from free PVX? Uh, I assume you mean like SMS and MMS. If so, absolutely. So if we go back to that neat module we have called Curly Trunking, you'll see there's a section about SMS numbers. So which numbers you have with us that support SMS will show up here. Not all numbers, so like toll-free, we don't do SMS on uh, because of some new regulations that make it really hard. And most US numbers are SMS capable. There are a few areas that aren't, but they're rare, but 99% of our numbers are SMS capable. So this will show you which numbers are SMS capable. And for each number, you just edit it and you pick which users, one or more users, can use that number for SMS. So I'm going to say user 1000. So user 1000 is allowed to use this phone number for SMS. And now in free PBX, you can log into the user control panel. And SMS, you can start adding widgets. So I already have it added here. And you can actually see the inbound. Uh, the, the message history with phone numbers here, and you can click on it to actually see the whole conversation and reply back to it again. If you want to start a new message, I think I've asked some, yep, it went through. If you want to start a new message, start new conversation, two, and you put the phone number you want to send to, initiate, and type your message. So of course, you've got to set your location with us up for SMS on our trunking backend, meaning you've got to register a brand and campaign before you can do this. But once you've done that, within free PBX messaging is easy. 
And then if you use things like Clearly Anywhere Mobile, um, all the SMS will show up in our mobile app. If you're using things like Sangoma Connect, our messaging will show up there. So basically you can do all your SMSing through Clearly Anywhere or UCP or Sangoma Connect. And then full support for MMS. So you can send images and videos and emojis and everything else you want to send. Okay, that seems like it for questions, Bree. Perfect. Well, thank you, everybody, for your questions and your active participation. It's really great input. We've just kept this under an hour, Tony, so I think that's about time to awesome. call it. Um, for everyone asking, we will have a recording of this webinar. I usually get them live on our recordings page under our events page on our website or YouTube channel um, by Monday or Tuesday. So you'll see that there. And um, if you are looking for any information specifically on the topics we talked about, let's say specifically on Stir Shaken or the 10 DLC stuff, definitely check out our blogs. We, we work really hard at updating everyone and providing resources in our blogs on these important subject matters and also on previously held webinars. So check out those recordings. Thank you very much, Tony, for doing that live demo and answering all those Thank questions. You. Have a great day. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.